when I was a little girl and I was growing up, I didn't have a dad and mom raised us by herself. And I had a big problem when I went to school with like the other kids having their dads and they would say what they did and we didn't have a lot of money or a car. So I had a big problem with inventing facts that weren't true. And um, I trusted God from an early age. I think I probably accepted God in my heart probably when I was like eight or nine years old. And I tried my best all my life to live for him. And uh, I would like, when I would walk, take walks, I would talk to him. It was like I, I had brothers and sisters and cousins around all the time, but I would rather be by myself. And I invented just Jesus was my friend. And, and, I, and, and everything I talked about, I talked with him. And it was like my imaginary friend, but it was Jesus. And I tried my best to be what I needed to be, but at school it was hard because I wasn't like the other kids, and I didn't have the exciting things, and they went on vacations, and they went on trips. And so sometimes I made up stories to make me look like I, you know, was important too, and like I did things. But as I got older in school and everything, I realized it didn't matter what they thought or if my story was, it was exciting. I loved God, but I didn't really share God like I should have. I kept it, they knew I was a Christian, but I didn't go around and explain it to everybody because I didn't want to look like the odd one. I didn't fit in. I was, didn't fit in anyway because I didn't party and do the things they did. So they knew that I was a goody goody. And, but I didn't really share the Lord like I really needed to. And a lot of my friends knew that I was a Christian. And I met a girl in high school that, was a Christian, and her and I hung out together a lot, and all my life, all, all my dream was to just live for God the best I could. My, my desire as a young girl was to grow up, marry a preacher, and have a gospel family singer. <laughs> that was my dream, was to have a group, my kids and my husband and I go around and sing. And half of that came true. I don't have a preacher, but we did sing. But I made mistakes. I did things that weren't right. But God never left me. He, he was always there with me. And I would go into church services and hear people say, Oh, man, I had, you know, God saved me from this horrible thing. I had a drug abuse or I had alcohol abuse and God saved me from it. And I always thought, well, God didn't save me from any of that. That's not, so my life wasn't that important. But God showed me. I can be thankful that God blessed me enough to keep me from doing those things, from having the alcohol problem or the drug problem, or or being able to or being having to go through those things, and life wasn't always good, and and um we had a, a rough life when we first got married and everything. But all my life, all I wanted to do was center my life on God and just live for Him the best I could. And I'm just so thankful that over the years he's taught me more and more and more just how to give my life to him and really just to depend on him for everything. And it's odd because as a kid growing up, there was nothing that my God couldn't do for me. Nothing. Everything that happened in my life, I, I knew it was going to be okay because God was there with me. And as I got older, it was harder. It sounds odd, but it, it was harder to actually trust him with things. Because I got older, I guess, and got more into um, letting the world come in and letting the world take over. And I had to relearn how to just trust him and give him everything. And um, when I had cancer the first time, I went into the, di I went into the hospital and um, I had swelled up so huge that, and I don't take this the wrong way, but I could wear Gary's clothes. That's how big I had gotten in like two days' time. And I went into the hospital, and I was in there by myself, and they came in, and they said, is there anybody here with you? And I was like, no. They said, well, we got some bad news. We're not sure we should tell you with you by yourself. And I got scared, and the first thing I did, they said, well, we'll be back in. I started praying. I was like, God, whatever it is, help me to be able to deal with it. And they came in and told me that I had cancer, that I had tumors all through my body, and I was bleeding internally. And um, I had to go see a specialist. So I got a hold of Gary and he came to the hospital and we went to see the specialist and they told me if you come out of the operating room, it will be a miracle. And my first thought was, God's going to take care of me 
everything's going to be okay, I can do this. But as the days went on before my surgery, I started looking at, I had four little kids at the time, and I started looking at them, and I started thinking, God, what if, if you take my life, what are they going to be? What are they going to have? But I had to think about, if I would die, would I go to heaven? Would I make it to heaven? If I would die on that operating table, would I be able to make it to heaven? And it changed my life a lot. And um, I went through the surgery, and everything came out fine and God used me to have a testimony to other people um, they had a banquet in my honor and I got to do so many important things like to show other people how God had brought me through that and how God was taking me to a different place and so when God healed me of that and I kept on going in my life and everything I realized that nothing matters except for God. And so when Gary got cancer and some other things happened, I just learned that God has control. It's all about God. And that's what we need to do is just give him our whole life. And I just thank him. He has brought me so far and has taught me so much. And every it seems like every week I'm learning something new. I'm growing. And I just thank him for everything that he's done. And like I said, he didn't bring me out of something horrible, but he kept me from something horrible. And I thank him for that. And even though we didn't have a lot growing up, my mom taught us about God. And that was the most important thing that she could do for us was tell us about God and show us, not just tell us. I knew that my mom lived a life at home, the same life she lived in church. And to me, that's important for your kids. Because they see your, the real you at home. And they know the real you. And I just thank God for the way that I grew up. The way that my life was. I didn't have to worry about getting into things because they weren't there available to me. And I just thank God for 